In this video, I'm gonna tell you how to start fault finding when you haven't got a clue where to begin. I've been an engineer for 15 years and this is the three step process that I teach to my own apprentices so that they can get to the right fault every single time. You turn up to a dead boiler, your mind's gone blank, the customer's on your shoulder and you just are so embarrassed. We've all been there. It's something that I've definitely experienced and I'm sure that people after us will experience the same thing. It's nothing new and it's nothing to be embarrassed about. The truth is that fault finding isn't magic. It's not this secret skill that I and other engineers like me have learned and are hiding behind gate closed doors. It's logic and once you break it down, you can start to understand things. So that's what I'm gonna be helping you with in this video. Most new engineers panic because they can't find the fault straight away. But what you've got to realize is that fault finding actually starts from the walk from the van to the front of the customer's property and beyond. That's where the fault find starts. So that brings us nicely to our first step. And the first step is observe. I need you to be observing everything. As you walk up to the customer's property, you can be looking at the flue, seeing if you can see the flue termination. Maybe you can see the condensed pipe coming out of the wall, looking at the general condition of the property and the guttering, because that will become relevant later when you look at other faults and things that could potentially be affecting the flue. You're going to be taking all of this in and it's building a picture of what's going on. Then the customer's going to invite you inside and that's when I like to have what's called the cup of tea chat. While the customer's making your cup of tea, just listen. Don't say anything. Don't go in with any preconceived ideas. Don't lead the customer to any conclusion. Okay, Just listen to what they're saying. Ask them what the fault is. Ask them how often it happens. Has it happened before? Has another engineer ever done any work on the boiler recently? Have you had any work done recently? Any new floors put down? Anything that you feel could be relevant to that particular issue that they're having. Next, you're gonna come over to the boiler. Bear in mind, we're still at the observe stage. We haven't got any tools in yet. We haven't started diagnosing. We haven't started using multimeters, none of that. Forget all of that. We're gonna go over to the boiler and we're gonna have a look at the boiler. What's the general condition like? Okay, what does the condition of the system look like? What's the condition of the flu like? Is it a good installation? Is it a bad installation? Is it a really, really old boiler? Is it a really cheap boiler? All of these things are going to alter your fault finding process and inform your decision as time goes on. All these little pieces of information are you kind of creating a image of what could be going wrong and likely causes and then that's gonna guide you later on as you come to the next step. The next step is test. Now you're gonna be testing components, but test smart, okay? Start with the basics. If I had a pound for every time when I first qualified, when I rushed in and went straight to a really involved fault find, when I hadn't checked the basics first, I would be a millionaire. Always check your basics first. I know it's really tempting, especially if the day before you've done a fault find and you're like, oh, I know this model really well, I know what that fault is, and then you think, oh, it's gotta be that again this time because it's almost the same fault. Never fall into that trap. It can be many different things, many different components every single time. But starting with the basics is a great way to weed out any simple faults before you get involved in doing strip downs and taking parts out and testing resistances and calling manufacturers. You might not need to go that far. It might be as simple as testing to see if you've got gas at the boiler. And if there's no gas, it might be something as simple as someone's left the bloody meter off. I can think of a job back when I first started working out for one of the largest national companies in the UK. And I remember I went to this job the day before I had a faulty gas valve on the exact same model. I walked into this job and I was like, I know it's the gas valve, 100% know that that's what it's got to be. So I went in, I diagnosed it, it seemed like that's what it was, but I wasn't too sure, but I thought, well, it was that yesterday, so I'll order that again today. It turns out the part was special order and it took three days to come in. Not a problem, not great, but it does happen. Nothing we can do about it. So we waited three days, I came back there, put the new gas valve on and the same fault was there. At that point, the customer was on my back and they were looking at me thinking, what are you gonna to do to get us out of this? It wasn't until I went over to the gas meter and tested it to find out that it was a 40 meter governor and it could have been solved the same day by simply calling Southern Gas Networks to come out and replace that meter governor. That's a prime example of where checking your basics would have got me out of trouble there. Without doing any in-depth fault finding, I could have got to the bottom of that and got that solved for my customer really, really quickly. This has happened multiple times with different things like not checking to see if I've got power at the boiler, not checking to see if there's a neutral fault or an earth fault. There's lots of different things like that that can appear where it's really, really basic. And if I'd just done the basics, it would have solved me a lot of problems. 
So remember, test, but test smart. The third and final step is think. Once you've started to build a picture and you've started to test some components and work out what's going on, I want you to think with logic. It's really, really easy, especially in those early days as an engineer, to get confused and be led down pathways to things that are just kind of irrelevant. Don't be afraid to call the manufacturer and don't be afraid to ask for the book. Trust me, some of the best engineers in the country still have to call the manufacturer in order to confirm things. There's no shame in it, you don't need to be embarrassed and your customer isn't gonna think you're stupid. Trust me when I say that a customer is gonna much rather that you call the manufacturer and get their boiler working than not call them and then be without heating for you know, further days. Logic is the key word here, okay? Don't get led astray and start going down different pathways. If, for example, you're working on an S-plan heating system and you're trying to diagnose a fault with what you suspect is the faulty valve, then use logic. Remember, the system is like a circle and if there's any break in the circuit, then it's not gonna work, okay? So if you've tested your timer, you've got power from your timer to your room thermostat and you've now got power down the brown going to the valve, well, you know that the whole system is okay and the fault is, generally speaking, gonna be something to do with the valve. It could be a mechanical fault, could be a faulty motor, but you know it's somewhere within that valve, and then you can kind of hone down on that area and get that repaired for that customer. I still use this three-step process even today after doing the job for 15 years. Sometimes if I've had weeks and weeks and weeks of maybe doing heat pump installations or installing boilers and I haven't done many repairs, this is a great place for even me to come back to so I can reset, recenter myself and make sure that I'm going through the process logically. It's really, really gonna help you, especially in those early days when you might be a little bit less confident on site and you might know not have all the answers. It's just gonna allow you to calm it down, slow down a little bit and work through it logically. Again, I cannot stress enough. Don't be afraid to call colleagues. Don't be afraid to look at the manufacturer's instructions and don't be afraid to call the manufacturer as well. These are resources that are all available to you. They're completely free and they're gonna help you get to that fault find. This three-step process is designed to help you get to the answer efficiently and accurately, okay? By approaching it this way, especially if you're self-employed, it's gonna enable you to get to a fault find quicker, fix the boiler for the customer, and let you get onto the next one. So you're gonna earn more money, and it's just gonna help you overall. The other thing to consider as well is if you work for a national company, or you work for a larger company, where they're monitoring your first time fix, and your parts costs, and how well you're fixing stuff in general, then this is gonna improve all of that. So it's something to bear in mind because it's only gonna benefit you. Next time you go to a job, remember, observe, look at everything walking all the way up to the property up until you're gonna start testing the boiler. Then you're gonna test, but test smart. Check the basics first before you move on to an advanced fault find or use preconceived ideas from a repair you've done earlier or the day before. And then the last thing is think. Think logically, work through the process, and I promise you, you're gonna to get to that right fault every single time. If you like this video, then please share it with your colleagues or your training groups. Really, really wanna help as many people as I can with this channel, and we're gonna be doing more videos about fault finding, boilers, how to get a job, work experience, all of the things that newly qualified gas engineers need. It's gonna be all here in this one place. There's links in the description below. One is to join our email list and the other is to join our online community. It's completely free and I go live there every week where I do a live Q&A. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.